Hi, I'm Chuck, KK6USY. Welcome to Ham Radio Ventures. Today we have the Zygu VG4. It's, it's a four band antenna, vertical, and uh, I've heard some really, really good things about it from some friends. They have all purchased them also, and uh, they had nothing but good things to say about it. So let's open it up and see what it comes with. All right, let's open this thing up. Yeah, that was already open. All right. Okay, we have some packaging here. We've got a, uh, looks like a trap. Let me set this aside this way so we have more room over there. Looks like we have the uh, matching unit. It's got the SO239 down here and ways to mount it. So we'll set that aside. We've got a section. Make sure there's nothing inside them. Got two more traps that are already connected together. All right, and each each one is sectioned. This is number five, number six, and number four. So that's kind of cool. They help you out a little there. Now these are uh, capacity hats and ground planes. So the bottom of this has its own ground plane, so you don't need any wires down below. And it looks like there's about eh, 10 or so. And then three, there's three shorter ones. We'll break that open later. Actually came greased, it looks like. We got a bag of hardware. Got some, oh, it looks like we have some tools inside there too. So that's kind of nice. It comes with tools. You may not need anything to put this thing together, guys. We've got a plate. That's a mounting plate, I'm sure. This looks like the uh, the bottom here, where it uh, looks like the uh, all the little ground lugs go into there, and it mounts the uh, box here. So that's cool. And it does look like you know what it's it's isolated from the bottom here. I was wondering about that. That's uh, like fiberglass, or yeah, well, it looks like fiberglass. So that, it actually isolates the uh, pole. We've got another pole here, but it also has two inside. And those are not, uh, this is uh, number two. And this is ten, nine and 10, looks like. And then we have another section here, which is number one. And anything else? Looks like nothing else in the box. All right, let me uh, get a little closer look up for some of these things for you guys, and uh, we'll, we'll see what all we got here. All right, so this is a uh, mounting plate here. Looks to be about a quarter inch thick. Pretty heavy duty. Okay, there's the bag of parts, guys. It's got a couple wrenches. Looks like a uh, another wrench here, an Allen wrench. A bunch of clamps and stuff. I'll pour those out later once we get ready. Now this is the base of it here where you mount. And like I showed you guys, I mentioned earlier, this looks like this is some kind of fiberglass to isolate the top and the bottom of the antenna. All right, has a mounting spot here for this box. Okay, so you got the SO239 down here, guys. And it would mount probably just about like that or down underneath, or probably underneath. And then this ground lug here is gonna to go to this ground lug on, on the, the mast here. And then if you just look, all you got a couple of just sections. This would be the section above with the other mount on it right here, guys. 
So let's just start putting this thing together and see how it goes. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount these things about an inch and a quarter in. I'm gonna mount them in to where they're just inside this a little bit. That's probably about an inch and a quarter. And that'll be the longest this, this thing should be, okay? So we'll probably have to make it a little bit shorter in a, on a few bands. We'll see how it comes out. Let me get set up. Okay guys, so there is two of these short ones. These are the capacity hats. And then there's six for the ground and then four, so a total of 10 of the longer ones for capacity hats. So four of those are for capacity hats also. All right. So let's just, we're gonna work from the top down. So it looks like 10 is the, uh, the longest one. And as you can see, 10 has a little cap on the top to keep from getting water in. So we, now, when you do these joints here, guys, you want to buy um, an antioxidant when you put this up permanent. I'm not going to leave this up permanent for now, but if, if I ever do, I will definitely put that on there. So we're going to bring this down, and we're just going to go, oh, let's see, it measures to here. So we're just going to go just a little farther. So about, so about an inch and a quarter in. And now I gotta find a hose clamp for that. So we're gonna take a hose clamp and put it right here. Okay. And it looks like looks like this it comes with this supplied wrench. Looks like this will fit this. So we'll just snug that up. I don't want to go too tight. I don't want to really bend things, but I just don't want it to move and it's still not tight enough there, guys. So there we go. We're, we're clamping it down now. Give it one more little snug clamp. Okay, so that's 10. It's a top and nine. Now we're gonna look for eight. Here is eight and seven. Everything's marked really well, guys. So there's eight and seven. It already has the clamp on that one. So same thing again, we're gonna go in. So we're gonna go, it goes into here, so we're just gonna go just a little past that. So there, that's about an inch and a quarter or so. We'll tighten this one down. One more little one there. Now, if you see right here, a couple things. You've got, this is where your capacity hats are gonna go. So it should be one, two, three, four there okay and then you have two more here and you can see right here it, it, it this is where it kind of it comes down it's kind of a custom piece you don't really you couldn't buy that piece like that probably yourself but they've actually molded it down to where it fits the next piece up here i'm just going to tighten that one just a little bit more so we're already shoot about 10 feet long so this was seven so now we're going to look for six I set this on my chair here. I got a chair over that way, guys. Here, let me move the camera this way a little bit. So I have a chair out there. I'm gonna set this on, probably two chairs. So we're at seven. Let's look for six. It's probably these here. So this is six, five, and four. So I'm gonna line them up again like I did before. And like I said, we're gonna go in to this, this mark, and then we're just gonna go just a hair farther, okay? Just so we have good insertion in there. So it's far enough inside, so it's not gonna bend over on us. Well, I would say that the, the workmanship and all this looks really good. The, uh, the tubes are fairly heavy duty. I've, I've got other antennas like this, when I'm back from my CB days, that were not quite this heavy duty. But they were still good. It looks like they've got everything tight so far. I'm gonna put one more chair out that way, guys. Now, I think this thing's about 17 pounds total, guys. So it's not a light antenna. It's not something you're gonna pack around all the time. So let's look, what do we have here? This is number two. This is number three, marked nicely again. Looks like this time we're gonna need a clamp. So I'm gonna pick the next size down. 
I'm going to line our, our numbers up just because I'm kind of anal that way. Same thing again, guys, is we're going to go in in just a little bit. So right here we've got a little gap. Now it's flush. I'm going to push it in about a quarter inch. And it would help to put this where it goes, up here, where it actually will clamp. It doesn't do any good to clamp where there's nothing inside. This thing is pretty long. I, don't, I forget the full measurement. We'll have to check it out later and let you guys know. Okay, we are at three, so now we do number two. And two is gonna go this direction. We need another hose clamp. All right, we got that. Move it down some more. Getting heavy on the end out there, guys. Okay, two, so now we need number one and another hose clamp. No number on this one, but I'm assuming it goes in. It looks like it goes, this goes through this hole here and you have another one here. So you have clamping this way and at 90 degrees to it. So let me take those off. It has a, lock, a washer and a lock washer for each one of these. And that is going through the uh, fiberglass part, guys. If you can see that right there. Looks like it's lined up. So they did a nice job there. There we go. All right. Let's just snug that up a little bit. Now be careful not to over tighten this. And, and you guys, when you tighten, always tighten the nut side because it'll tighten better that way. Something I learned in my mechanics days. No instructions, guys. I'm just doing this by uh, how it looks. It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. So we're gonna pull these screws out, guys. These are little Allens. So that Allen wrench should fit this also. So we want the SO230 nut. Let's do SO239 down with this underneath and that. Let's see. Well, looks like it goes on both sides of it. I'm going to set that one, then I'm going to go across and set this one over here, which should stabilize it a little bit for me. And I'm not going to go tight yet, guys, until I get everything in. Another pro tip there. So far, guys, I think this is a on a one to five scale, I think it's like a one or two. It's, it seems pretty easy so far, this part of it. Now, when we get ready to do, start the tuning part, who knows? Now, I mentioned this earlier. There's a ground lug here. And pretty obvious is that's where that goes, looks like. All right, if you guys couldn't see it before, it's right there. All right, guys, I just wanna let you guys know also, if you go to the Radiotity site and look this antenna up, they have really nice instructions in there, color pictures, everything. This is how this works. You have two of these, these metal, these little serrated looking things here, looks like a knife kind of, uh, goes against the, the, the plate and does the opposite on the other side. And the way they show is the top one and top one and the bottom one and bottom one. That should disperse the weight really well. So really this was the hardest part, just figuring out where these things went. All right, we're just gonna look at the matching unit, guys. box has a weep hole down here at the bottom. I should have showed you that earlier. But it's got your uh, matching unit. Here's your matching unit and this is your, uh, looks like a maybe a one-to-one -one there. And that, uh, it's got some numbers inside there. And you got a little resistor sitting in there on this little board. So this is what the matching unit is. All right guys, so this is section eight and uh, this is section nine. So eight gets, this is the 20 meter. And that's the shorter ones, uh, capacity hats. So they just screw in here. And there's two of those. 40 gets these longer ones. These are the, I forget how many millimeters they are, but these are the longer of the, the 10, four of the 10 longer ones. And it gets four of those around this part. So same thing. And I'm gonna put these in, and I'll probably put the lower ones in once I get this thing on a pole only because it'll be lower for me. All right, guys, so I'm sitting at uh, 7.250. Let's go to look at it. It's like 9.8. But let's just do a sweep. 
and I'm sure on 40 though it's probably going to be my worst band because I'm so close to the house. But as you can see, it's really it's showing really long. So let's check out another band here. So I'm just going to pick one four two five zero. Oh, it's somewhere near the middle, and we'll check it. So 2.1. So that's pretty close. Let's just see where it's at. Yeah, it's it's long also. So so far we got two bands and they're both long. 21, 325. And 2.2. .2. Let's scan that one, see where it's at. Yeah, it's long also. So it looks like everything's long. 10 meters, so 28. 500 and it's 1.1 so that's not bad um, let's just see where it's at also so we'll go on to this if it's like everything else which it's actually pretty close but let's just see where it's at now it shows just a hair short but I think if we adjust everything else I think that should stay pretty close. Okay guys, I gotta tell you that the workmanship on this antenna from the factory is, is well done. Uh, a lot of things that you see like the tubes being not reamed out, or, you know, have leaving edges and stuff, none of that's here. But the instructions are terrible. Now RadioID did do an updated uh, version of the instructions, which is a lot better, but still it's incomplete or like I say that I broke the code on how to adjust 40, 40 meters to get it below 6.9. Now, if you read all the info on this thing, that's where this antenna was designed to be resonant was 6.9 um, and, and not 7.250 like I was trying to get. And if you watched my, if you watched the very first one when I ran the scan on it, it was at 6.9. I watched TO's video and when he ran his scan across, his was resonant there also. The best I could see and so I went in and I, I after I, it was let me just say it was like about 90 degrees here the day I decided to tune this thing up and down a ladder multiple times trying to get this thing right I would get it I would get it a little bit better on 40 but then all of a sudden I'd make the next adjustment and it messed up all the other bands so basically I'm pretty close to where I first set this up except for the how I adjusted 40. And I'll show you my setup. It's not optimal, I know that, uh, but it's about seven feet in the air. It's close to, I'm trying to keep it between an antenna in the air and the buildings and, the, and able to actually put this thing up. It's about 25 feet long. So not easy to throw up and then I put it on a seven foot pole, makes it even harder. Now I think I did crack the code on how you actually adjust this antenna for 40. And I'll show you in the instructions from Radiotity. Let me clip me, let me show you a clip of that right now. And if you read it carefully, it kind of makes sense on where you should adjust the antenna for 40. So let me show that to you guys. All right guys, sorry this is taking so long. It's going to be a long video, but I think it's worth it because it's a pretty good antenna. So this is Radiotity's revamped installation manual and you just get that by going to their site looking up the antenna and uh, scroll scroll down and it says where to actually get these you just click on the button and it takes you there so this is all there is this is pretty nice so what, what it came with was not near as nice now if you look at section number one and two that's the 10 meter section that's where I adjusted it okay and if you read this box right here it's, it says the vg4 antenna can be adjusted to frequency band center frequency point that we need during the adjustment the adjustment of the high frequency band shall affect the low frequency band while the adjustment of the low frequency band shall not affect the high frequency band therefore the adjustment sequence is to adjust from the 10 meter of the high frequency to the 40 meter of the low frequency Generally, the only the 40 meter 
frequency band needs appropriate adjustment. Okay, so that's what I did. I took this these sections right here, the bottom section, and dropped the set the number two section down inside, shortened it, and I got it usable. All right, I just wanted to show that to you guys. Now I'll, I'm also going to take you over and show you my setup. Like I said, it's not optimal. I'm next to a shed, but it's above the shed. And I'm in between my, my doublet that runs right through the middle of my yard, basically. So it kind of limits me. I've got another antenna set up that I'm testing for, uh, for something else. So let me show you what I got. And Well, I'll, I'll tell you first. What I, what I finally found out is, like it said in that, uh, that memo from, or the, you know, the little part in the box there, that adjusting 40 won't mess with any of the other bands. And so what I finally clued, clued me in is, well, maybe I can adjust the other bands to make 40 better. And that's what I end up doing. For me, this antenna, 40 is the, the band I want the best. And, and it's still not optimal, but it's good. It's got such a high, high Q that it, when, you, when you see these, I'll show you on, the gra on a graph how, how high Q this thing is. The other bands are almost flat across. So it doesn't, like, like they said, it doesn't really matter. So what I end up doing, because I could reach it, is adjusting the bottom section, the, this bottom section and the next section up, because I could reach that from my eight foot ladder and I adjusted 40 and all of a sudden, boom, it started coming in. I could probably still get look just a little bit better, a little higher up than I got it. I think I ran out of adjustment there, if I remember right. So <laughs> anyway, and like I said, I've got a Yagi for 10, 15 and 20. I don't, I'm looking for something with a, that's easy, fairly easy to put up and decent that I can get a little lower angle for 40. All right, let me show you what I did. Or I'll get up on the ladder and show you where I adjusted this. And hopefully, I, as far as I can tell, this is the way you do it. Okay, let me show you guys that. Okay, guys, so this is kind of my setup for, for tuning this thing. As you can see, I'll, I'll walk over there. I'm six foot two. So the pole right here is about seven foot. So not optimal, but that is a, an area that you can tune it. It's far enough off the ground, I think, to, to work. I, have, I happen to have this. If you don't have this, you'll have to tie your pole down, which will make it even harder. I was able to lift this up and, and put it in and out. As I lifted it over, I'd take all these radios off the bottom, take this coax off, adjust it, and then put it back up. I did that a bunch of times the other day. Let me kind of bring this thing up. Now I will show you a, um, a whisper setup of this thing for one or two nights. I, they're basically the same. So I might just show one, but the whisper on it was pretty good. Comparable to, to my dipole guys, which is actually a pretty good antenna. This is on 40 meters. All I did it on though. I get her out about here. I would loosen this and drop this down to shorten it. I didn't think that was the right way to do it. I was doing it at the top. It helped a little, but all of a sudden, all my SWRs and all my other bands were terrible. So this is where I adjusted it. Okay, I think what I'll show you first, now I, I don't think I told you guys this, but I, where I showed you the antenna is, is not gonna be where I'm gonna actually put it up. It's gonna be out back farther. Unfortunately, it's gonna be quite a ways away, so I'll have to get some better coax probably for it. But let's just see where we're at here. Let's, just, let's do, um, my target was 7250. Okay, let's just do a sweep. And I don't have this set real wide right now, guys. So it should give a fairly wide sweep as far as your V pattern, if the antenna is wider. Okay, so let's just, let's do a sweep. Okay, you see where it's at there? Okay, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll run this back what I love about this. I can come back to about where it is there. Now I'm going to hit 7 for the SWR. And at 7.110, as versus, it was like anywhere from 8.7 to 9.6 originally. This is doable. It will, uh, it will tune up here with my internal tuner on my radios. 14250, somewhere in the middle. It's 1.28. Perfectly fine. All right. Happy with that, we'll do a quick scan. And as you see, all these other higher bands, well this actually, 
This one it could be, it's actually still just a little bit lower, but I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Let's go to um, 15, so 21, and I pick 235, 1.28. Totally fine with that. We'll scan it real quick. And it shows still just a little bit long there. All right. My original for that with my original setting was 1.4. Uh, it was 2.0 on uh, on 20 meters, so I actually got better. All right, let's do uh, 28 500. Like I told you guys, I've I've got a, a three element Yagi for the these most of these bands, everything but 40. So let's see what it is. It's 1.9, and I can live with that. Um, under two, and if you watch the scan of this, it's pretty much flat. Actually, tell you the truth, up in the upper part of the band, it's a, a little bit better. It goes down to about 1.8, 1.7. But I'm fine with that. All right, just wanted to show that to you guys. I'd really like to thank the good folks over at Radiotity for sending this to me. They offered this to me or a uh, HT, and well, you guys know me, I took the antenna. Uh, this is a pretty great antenna, guys, so if you get it, uh, there should be a link for Radiotity there, and hopefully I'll have you guys a discount for that also. So make sure you check the uh, description for the link and uh, discount. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and, and hopefully this is helpful to any of you guys that have bought this antenna. All in all, I think it's a really good antenna. The instructions need help, and maybe we, I can contact Zygu and we can talk about it and... I really think the antenna was designed to be too low in the 40 meter band is what, what it all boils down to. But I'm not an antenna designer per se, and there may be other parameters that I don't know. But it seems like the coil maybe could be just a little shorter, um, the actual loading coil on it. I don't know, that might affect everything else. So, Because I'm not an expert at designing antennas. But hopefully you got something out of the video. If you did, hit that like. If you're new here, hit the, uh, the bell, hit all. That way you get all my future videos. And there may be more videos on this if I can dial it in even more. And I will update you guys on that if I do. I'm Chuck, KK6USY. This is Hammer Adventures. Thank you for being here. I know your time is valuable. 73 all, and hope to catch you guys on the airwaves. Maybe on the news I do.